，我算 Bobcat。Tania Stevens, T. She, that is her. Six years as a student athlete at Ohio University. Yeah. How how fast has this gone? <sighs> Super fast. Uh, it's it's literally no pun intended. It's flown by. Um, I literally was just thinking about it a couple days ago. Like this is about to be in a couple weeks. About to be my last time ever competing with spikes on, and. Um, it's crazy. It's crazy. It's been a crazy experience, crazy ride. I loved it. Do you remember the first time you stepped foot on this campus? Yes. It was November of 2017. And um, beautiful. Mm. It was so beautiful. The night that we were supposed to, we got in, um, met some of the girls, and then I got sick. I got the stomach. <laughs> I got a stomach virus. I wasn't able to attend their 6 a.m. practice that Monday, um, but got me some, some ginger ale, walked around campus, I got sick again, but it just felt home. It just felt like homely and I felt safe and um, uh. talking to the journalism department, felt so confident and being able to be accepted and get what I really wanted out of going to school was to get a great education and a good degree. So um, I fell in love. It took me a couple couple days to digest because I was sick, so I didn't get the full experience of seeing the track and whatnot, but I was able to talk to the coaches at that time and the girls at that time were all welcoming and huh. very sweet, so I loved it. Freshman Tania Stevens, what was Freshman Tania Stevens like? Oh gosh, Freshman Tania was um, surprisingly very negative, very depressed. Um, I came in, had some heart situation going on, um, some financial situations that had to be taken care of, and then I had uh, my feet. I had I had a great great posterior tendonitis situation going on with me that we could not figure out so I didn't get on the track uh, 2018 the 2018 2019 season it was just more so in the treatment room trying to figure out you know why are all these things happening so I was really trying I lost my identity not just with track but you know myself my relationship with God um, this was the first time I ever seriously felt depressed and, you know, just wasn't the, the girl that, you know, coming out of high school um, that really was wanting to do what she really wanted to do. Yeah, you know, people see you now and you're so energetic. You're all around campus doing everything and, and making things happen. But going back to what you were just talking about, when did things shift for you and, and who helped you? get through that that tough time when you were first at Ohio? Yeah, um, a lot of people. I have um, a lot of the, the, the uh, athletes that came in with me, um, some from swim team, football, track, of course, a lot of um, special people that helped me out. Um, the coaches at the time, they really encouraged me to seek um, therapy. I was very against therapy. I was very against that. Um, talking to my parents, of course. But Michelle Pride, I said there's three people in my life that really know a lot about me, know the ins and outs, and it's God, my mom, and Michelle Pride. Wow. <laughs> she knows everything about me, and honestly, I say she's one of the angels on earth for me because she's really the only person that knows what I looked and felt like that day that I really was not wanting to be here. So a lot of people, of course, but Michelle Pride was a huge, huge asset to helping me. Mm. What did she help you learn about yourself? She helped me understand that, you know, I'm a, I am someone who is very competitive, who's very, when it comes to being an athlete, perfectionist and try to be on top shape with everything. But she also helped me understand that I have different hats. I'm not just an athlete. 
Um, I could be an entrepreneur. I could be someone who is uh, caring for others. I could be, you know, I'm, an, I'm a student. So she helped me really identify that I'm more than just one uh, person and that, you know, understanding that I'm not on campus because of me running, but I'm on campus for more. Mm. And so um, just helping me identify who I really am, give me back to the T that I know who, who is that, you know, I've always been, so. Who was the first person to call you T? Oh, honestly, second grade. Oh, we're going way back. <laughs> yeah, this is from second grade. Uh, there's a kid in my class, I'm not gonna mention his name, but he was called T. And I told him that my name is uh, harder to say than his. So Mr. Parker, my second grade teacher said, you're gonna be called T. I'm just strung it along for the rest of my life. Well, T took to the track for, for all these years here at Ohio. When you think about races, when you think about moments, what is the defining experience that you will always remember from, from your time on the track here? I would say my first ever indoor race in 2022. Uh, first indoor race, 2022, and I came here in 2018. First time running a 300 indoor. Um, and my coach at the time, she's like, you're gonna run it. And I was like, man, okay, sure. And ran it, I felt good, felt great. Didn't know what time to hit. She just told me to run relaxed, run fast. And we get to the hotel, my coach P says, um, you just broke a 40 year old record. And I was like, wow, that is crazy because I didn't feel confident, but I felt excited. It was my first time hitting the track after years of not doing it. So um, that was really something that really shocked me and helped me boost confidence. Um, and it was just an exciting mo moment for me. That's unbelievable. That's, that's crazy. You've done a lot of awesome things, both on and off the track. You mentioned how you branched a little bit away from the track to build yourself as not just an athlete here on campus. So when did that process start? Like when did you branch out to join some of these organizations that you're a part of right now, like Morgan's Message and, and others that maybe people don't know about? Yeah, um, I realized that I was only identified as Tania Stevens track and field. And I was looking, if we talk about resumes in class, and I was like, this is not, well, this is not what I want to leave with. I want to leave with more. Um, love being a student athlete, but I'm not going to be one for the rest of my life. So I believe uh, last year when Caitlin, I was actually talking to Miss Tia at the time about I want to do a student athlete uh, mental health organization. And she was like, actually, this is perfect because Caitlin Little um, is looking at this organization called Morgan's Message. And I reached out to Caitlin. We started talking that summer and I started uh, as the vice president for Morgan's Message with Caitlin. And mm. that has been amazing um, just because it's needed. And I've been praying for that type of organization to hit this campus, especially because um, we have so many athletes who don't really talk about it, but um, they have that um, to do that. And then I joined the Student Athlete Advisory Committee and Ms. Tia reached out to me about potentially being a part of the council of uh, student athletes for the entire conference to represent Ohio University. So last year, well two years ago, I joined that and pretty much meet up with the other uh, teams in the conference and we talk about things that we, we want to change and, and figure out with the commissioner, our ADs, um, our sports admin. And that's a phenomenal experience, not just because, you know, I'm representing Ohio University, right. but also I'm meeting a lot of different student athletes. I'm literally having lifelong friendships with these people um, from different, comp from different uh, schools. Have you always been outgoing because you, you are so easy to talk to, you're so easy to connect with, so have you always been this way? My mom and dad always say that, you know, I'm someone that I always just, talk to anybody. My, my mom says I like 
if, it, if there was a squirrel sitting next to me, I would make friends with the squirrel, which is true. But There's a squirrel right there now. Hey, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, I've always, always just wanted to talk, always aim to make someone's day, um, put, a, put a smile on someone's face. It makes me happy, but yeah. also I never know what people are going through. So maybe that one little, hey, how you doing, could change something. So yeah, I've always been that since a kid, but my whole family's like that. So yeah, yeah. I love that being curious. It's there's a there's a line between like being nosy, but then being curious yeah. with with people. What what is what? Give me an example. Like when you when you meet someone for the first time, let's say that that comes to Morgan's message. Uh, yeah. meeting like I'm what's like, hey, what's the conversation i'm t i'm a student athlete i run track and field here um nice of you to be here uh obviously you know what this organization is but what do, what about you what are you doing here what do you want to know about the organization how can we help and get to know them now we get to their instagrams or you yeah. know their numbers to see if they ever want to talk privately about things but yeah, there's always a fine line. You don't want to ask them too much, but also just being there is like a, another person yeah. for them if they need help, so. Yeah. When did you first fall in love with track and field? So, I um, first fell in love with track and field. Um, I started running track my sophomore year of high school, and I was the only one in my family that said I didn't want to run track. My mom was a coach and my brothers ran track and um, my mom also ran track in high school. She was a beast, but I was like, nah, I'm a basketball player. I truly believed that I was going to be the next Candace Parker. Shout out to her retiring, mm. but I bought a Tennessee jersey. My favorite number is number three because of Candace Parker. Like, I thought I was going to be that. So you're always in lane three? <laughs> I, you, you know, it's my, it's my favorite number. But, uh, so I refused. I even went to a different high school because I believed I was going to be a basketball wow. player. And after freshman year, I didn't do too well. I wasn't comp I wasn't really good at basketball. Like, I was more so a post player, but I'm 5'5". Five five. Mm. So it doesn't work out. Tough. Yeah, it doesn't work out. <laughs> I like being in the block. I love, love being in the block. Love the hustle. I went to AAU basketball, like I was really a basketball player. Then I told my mom, I'm like, I can't play basketball anymore. I can't go through this anymore. She's like, well, we're not going to quit. You're going to do something. And I was like, volleyball. We can do volleyball. She's like, no. She's like, you're running track. I was like, fine. Yeah. I ran track. Hated the first practice. Hated the first meet. It was cold. Why? Why'd you hate it? It was cold. Um, didn't, we're complaining about the weather. It was, it was really, it was cold because we're in Pennsylvania. Yeah, okay. It was cold, and I just was like, Mom, I feel like running around a track. Then, probably like three meets in, we went to an invitation. I broke the uh, 25 year old school record. Talk about it. So I was like, Okay, it's fine, it's cool. Then our our four by one kept breaking records in our district and then we want we went to states and won states. But at that time I was running really fast and I was like, Yeah, I can't play basketball anymore. I'm I love track. Then the twenty sixteen Olympics hit and Allison Felix was on the screen and she ran every event that I ran at States. She was the same leg as me in the four by one and I was like, Yep. I'm supposed to run track. You are, you told me this beforehand, you're the first person in your family to be a student athlete mm -hmm. and go to college. Mm -hmm. What's the significance of that for, for you to be able to, to to change that for your family? It's huge. Um, it's, uh, it's a huge deal and I, uh, I don't take it lightly, honestly. And there's days where I've, you know, rolled over in bed, I'm like, bro, I don't want to do this. Then I get a text message from my brother, I mean, like, T, you, you're, you're, you're built for this. None of us can do this, but you. And it's small stuff like that that like make me want to get back on the track and continue to come out here and do anything that I can. Uh -huh. um, so when I run and 
practice and do everything is for my family because they they uh, they've done so much for me and this is the the least I can do for them. Uh -huh. But now seeing like my little cousins, they're running track and hearing my little baby cousins saying they're playing basketball and getting themselves involved, they want to go to school for sports. It's very motivational for me and it makes me happy that I could probably start the foundation for that. Beautiful. Are you sad that it's over? Oh gosh, I am um, having days where I've been just feels like I'm mourning. <laughs> so you're not ready. Are you not ready to move on to the next step, or you're just? It, it. I said that it's it's very hard that you know being a six year. I've been here so long that it's going to take longer for me to let go uh -huh. because it's what I've known and I've created a habit of being an athlete time management and responsibilities and the one thing I love especially this year is the team aspect um, I can do away with the individual stuff you know winning a race and you know all that stuff but yeah. having sisters uh -huh. um, and this team this 2023-2024 squad um, they make me so emotional because like they're just they're just beautiful young ladies that like have really you know, I couldn't ask for a better team to finish my career as a track and field athlete. Wow. Yeah. So what's next for you? Next is hopefully be a broadcaster. It's been my dream since fifth grade. Uh, and I mean, that is the real reason why I came to OU. The journalism program is like no other. And I've had it firsthand. So um, getting all I can um, and starting that that journey as being a broadcaster my dream is to have my own show and uh so we'll see if that happens what would be the title tea time tea time okay we already got that in the works it's always happening. sports broadcaster what what's like what's the favorite question you'd ask when you have a guest on give me give me a, a good question like off, ask me ask off me a question. brand question or like sports just, related just and what's 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 my a, favorite question is when people ask why what's their why mm. because it dives into more than just I love that more than just the sport it brings out the human in them all right what's your why my why is my family my why is my my future my longevity my legacy mm. um I want to do and and the little girl who I was I want to make sure she's proud but I also want to make sure that my future is secure as well and my legacy is is in good shape. So doing all the hard work, and if I have children, that they see, mom was that girl. Yeah. You know, so that is my why. Mic drop. Love that. T, appreciate you. Thank you so much. Shout out to Coach. Can I do a shout out? Yeah. Shout out to Coach Champ, Coach Pease, Coach Drew, Coach Mary. I've had several coaches here, my time here, but those four coaches. Especially Coach Champ, because he's my main coach, have done the best at being, not just being an athlete, but um, helped me grow as a woman. I could not have asked for a better group of people to help me in my career as a track and field athlete. And without them, and God, and my family, but without them, I can, can say without a doubt that I'm going to get out of here with a great degree, but also being a great woman because of them. That's a fact. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. Thank you.